Hello and welcome back to Speed Model. So, last time we were done with the pantry. Today, let's actually move on and sort of just fix up miscellaneous things. Now, I say miscellaneous things because this is going to be one of the messiest episodes of Speed Model you've ever seen. Sorry about that, but I guess everything done today will improve the general aesthetic of the entire scene. So yeah, without any further ado, let us jump into episode 4 of Speed Model. After I was done with the last episode, I looked back at what I created and I realized I was missing a very crucial component in the pantry, a fridge. So I began to fix it up by shortening the counter. I scoot the sink over to the right side, which takes out one of the two cabinets there. Once that's out of the way, I begin to build a nice fridge. I start out with a cube and use a combination of beveling and extrusion to get it into a vaguely fridge shape. I give it a dark glossy texture, thus completing the main part of the mesh. That allowed me to move on to build a handle for the fridge. The way this is done is very similar to the previous seasons. I use mirroring and box modeling to form an elongated shape that connects to the fridge body. With that out of the way, I begin to copy the blinds everywhere, adapting them to differently sized windows by changing the number of strips there are in the blind. I do this for every window in the scene. Then, as I looked around for the next thing to do, I realized that the plants had actually extended beyond the wall right beside it. I tried a variety of ways to see how I could prevent that from happening, but eventually, the method that worked is treating the plants as hair and using hair manipulation features like combing and cutting on it. I combed the leaves upward a little, allowing them to avoid cutting through the wall. Next, I decided to work on a set of front doors for the entire office space. The style I chose is double doors with a semicircular glass panel in the center. I used boolean operators to construct this. Starting with an elongated cylinder, I slice it in half of a cube, and again to make it smaller. Then with an additional cylinder, I slice a semicircular region out of it. I then use this mesh as a template to cut a hole into the door itself, placing a sheet of glass in its place. With that done, I build a door handle using a cylinder giving it a nice glossy texture. I copy the whole setup once over to build a second entrance. Then I proceed to the opposite side of the building to add some windows. I cut a hole in the wall and build a little T-shaped structure across it. It takes a lot of fine tuning to get it perfect, but I'm very happy with the result. I do the same work once again at the opposite end of the office space. With that done, I copy a sheet of glass to fill up those areas. Instead of removing the white strip, I decided to adjust it a little so it fits nicely into the T-shape. I decide I want to work on texturing a little, so I pick out a nice wooden texture to apply to the floor. I take some time to get the UVs right, since the texture should appear at an appropriate scale. With everything in place, you can see that the realism of the office space has increased drastically. I also realized that the coffee table in the pantry did not actually have a wooden texture. I downloaded another wood texture and used some manipulations to make it tolerable and color it the way I want. Then, back in Blender, I apply it to the mesh, taking some time to adjust the UVs so the scale looked okay. Then, I turned my attention to one of the offices. I begin by moving my scale figures over and building a desk to fit the scale of the seated figure. I center the desk roughly and extend the surface so it forms an L shape. After making some minor adjustments, I proceed to build the tabletop, which I've decided will be slightly wider than the legs. I use extrusion to achieve this, taking special care to join the corners correctly. In fact, I had some trouble around several of the corners, and so I had to spend an extended period of time making additional cuts on a table surface to make sure everything fits correctly. With that done, I create a very dark wooden texture for the desk but I decide after a while that I only wanted that for the legs of the desk. I tweak up the material so that it is a tad lighter than the original image and also subtly apply the grain as a bump map so the surface didn't appear perfectly flat. Then I turn my attention to the top of the desk, actually reusing the same texture that is used in a pantry because I didn't want to download yet another wooden texture. 
Of course, I didn't want it to look like I just reused the texture, and there has also been way too much wood in this office, so I decided to retexture the pantry surface to granite instead. I spent some time in GIMP to tweak up a granite texture to my liking. This texture had some small problems in terms of uneven lighting, but that could be very easily fixed. I also lightened up the texture a little since I didn't want the very large number of black spots visible in the original texture. When the texture is to my liking, I returned to Blender to apply it to the countertop, once again taking some time to adjust the UVs until the scale of the dots looked okay. I noticed some Z fighting near the side of the counter, so I take out some time to fix that. Rebuilding several of the faces solved the problem. Turning our attention back to the office, I decided to cheat and import the chair from the last season of Speed Model. I had put quite a bit of effort into building that chair and I really liked how it turned out, so I think this course of action is forgivable. I scale and position it nicely with the help of the scale figure. After that, I turned my attention to building a little filing cabinet. I spent some time to chop out little notches into a tall cuboid, and to build a drawer for each notch. I also cut a notch into the drawer itself to build a handle that can be used to open the cabinet. Upon retexturing the handle, we are done for the drawer. I duplicate it several times downwards, completing the filing cabinet. I also decide to build a guest chair, deriving it from the swivel chair we already have. Basically, this was to be the less comfy version, with only a backrest. I spent some time to name all the new furniture correctly. And that is where we've left off for today. Here's what we've done so far, including a sneak peek of the new and improved pantry. As you can see, things are shaping up very nicely. All we have to do is to add a few more things, you know, mainly a computer, and then we are ready to copy it to the other side of the building. This design is very symmetrical, which gives us the advantage of just copying stuff instead of having to redo everything from scratch. So yeah, that's our plan for next time to finish up both the offices. Now, if you're watching these episodes as they come out, do take note that the next three Mondays are all dedicated to graph theory. So yeah, we will be going on a slightly longer break from Speed Model. In fact, the next episode is almost one month away. It will come on the 14th of March. Sorry about that, but I do have to hurry graph theory along. So yep, yeah, see you in a month's time. Hopefully by then I would have done a lot more work than I have at this point. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in the last season of Speed Model. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.